Let's look at division and dividing by single digit with zeros in the quotient. We might have this problem here where we have 305 divided by 6. 6 cannot go into 3, but 6 can go into 30. 6 goes into 30 5 whole times, because 5 times 6 is 30, and 30 minus 30 is 0. At this point, I bring down the 5. 5 divided by 6. Hey, wait, if I only have 5 1s left, I cannot divide them into 6 parts. Therefore, I place a 0 inside of my quotient. I place that 0 inside of my quotient. And, at that point, I follow the rest of my steps of my division process, which is 0 times 6, which is 0, and 5 minus 0, which is 5, so 5 is our remainder. So that we have 305 divided by 6 is 50 with the remainder of 5. Now you'll re remember, it's like, this is what I like to do, is I always like to place that digit, what it is that I'm dividing directly above that, and if I knew that I didn't have a digit here at all, then I knew there wasn't a digit in the ones place, I know that I had, must have made a mistake somewhere along the way. Again, I could check this problem here. Inverse operation of division is multiplication, where I multiply 50 times that 6 there. 6 times 0 is 0, 6 times 5 is 30, and I add back in that remainder, 305. The parts of my division problem again, this is the quotient. What I'm dividing is called the dividend, and what I'm dividing by is that divisor. Here's another example. We have 617 divided by 6. So I look at those hundreds first and those six hundreds. I can divide six hundreds into one part there, so it's one times six is six, and six minus six is zero. Bring down one number at a time, I bring down the one. After I bring down that one, I go ahead and divide again, and I'm dividing those um, one tens, one tens into six parts. Uh-oh, I can't do that. So that's division step right there, I can't do that. It only goes in 0 times. That's why 0 times 6 is 0, and 1 minus 0 is 1. I place that 0 as that placeholder since I could not do that 1 divided by 6. At that point, I can go ahead and bring down my 7. 17 divided by 6. Oh, I'm familiar with that. That's 2, because 2 times 6 is um, 12, and 17 minus 12 is 5. 5 is our remainder, so oftentimes students forget to put their remainder up there, and again, they're not being precise. Other students will forget to place the 0, and what, in other words, they'll end up with 12 here. Well, they'll just be all, oh, well, I can't divide right here, so I'll just go ahead and bring down another digit. And then, so that's incorrect as well. So please don't make those mistakes. Again, my check for this problem would be 102 times 6 to 1, 6 plus 5 is 617, so it checks. Here is a problem for you to try. We have 305 divided by 3. Go ahead and hit pause, and do show your check work. All right, dividing those hundreds, that's one time. One times three is three. Three minus three is zero, and I bring down the zero. After I bring down, I divide. Zero divided by three, that's zero. Zero times three is zero. Zero minus zero is five. Again, it's step by step. Bring down the five. Five divided by three, well, that there is one, because one times three is three, and five minus three is two and 2 is our remainder. Did you show that check work? I told you to and asked you to. 303 plus 2, 305. Here's another problem for you to solve. Go ahead and solve it. And this time you don't have to do your check work. You can if you want, but you don't have to. 
So 5 cannot go into 4. 5 can go into 45, 9 whole times, because 9 times 5 is 45, and 45 minus 45 is 0. You'll notice that I wrote that 9 directly above the 5 there. Next, I bring down the 3, and this is where I get my 0 into the quotient, because 3 divided by 5, I can't do that. I place a 0 there. Again, there's one digit above each of those numbers where it is that we had divided. 0 times 5 is 0, and 3 minus 0 is 3, and then we put our remainder there. That's 90 remainder 3. That's our answer. That's our quotient. 453 divided by 5 is 90 remainder 3. There's our check work for that there. 450, we do have to add back in that remainder where it is 453. Pat yourself on the back if you did your check work too. I'll leave you with one last problem, and this one I will go ahead and go over with you. We have 7,023 divided by 7. You'll notice that our dividend, what we're dividing, got a little bit bigger, but it's still those same steps where we go 7 divided by 7 to begin with. We get 1. This is where it is that we put our answer to each whenever it is that we divide. 1 times 7 is 7, and 7 minus 7 is 0. Again, as you're learning, if you need to, wouldn't hurt to write DMSBC. That division family will continue to help you remember what to do for each of those steps. At this point, we bring down a 0. After we bring down, we go back to dividing again, where it's 0 divided by 7, which is 0. 0 times 7, which is 0. I often sometimes see students try to bring down more than one number at once, and then so don't fall into that mistake and that trap. You'll notice that this quotient does have two zeros in it, because we have 2 divided by 7, which is also 0. I've lined up my digits here, and I know I still will have one more digit within my answer. 0 times 7 is 0, 2 minus 0 is 2, and I bring down the 3. 23 divided by 7 is 3, and 3 times 7 is 21, and 23 minus 21 is 2. So 2 is our remainder. Oftentimes, remember, students forget to write that remainder in. If you have a remainder of 0, please don't write it. You don't do that. How do I do my check, you might ask? Hopefully you know, because this is review at this point. You shouldn't ask me. <laughs> 1,003 what? Times 7. And then you go step by step there with that multiplication process. And what do you do with the remainder again? Add it back in. Now, if you did not get that same 7,023, 7,023, what would you need to do at that point? <laughs> Ideally, go back, see if you can spot the mistake, or even just try that problem again. And that's how it is that we're working away and learning a little bit more about that division process and about math in general with that zeros within the quotient.